What's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Marie. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're already a part of the family, then welcome back. Thank you guys for coming over and watching another fragrance video with me. So if you're new here, over here on my channel, what I like to do is talk about fragrance. I love to smell good, that is my thing. So if you are someone that is into fragrances, I would love for you to subscribe, okay? In today's video, we're going to be talking about fragrances that smell expensive. Now, I do have a range of fragrances here that range from high end to low end and somewhere in between. So I have a little bit for everybody, but you know, everybody is not into spending a bag on fragrances and I get it. I'm the same way. Sometimes I like what I like and it does come with a heavy price tag, but you know I'm a collector so that's how it goes for me but like I said I have an assortment for everyone okay so if you're someone that wants to smell expensive then keep watching of course I have an honorable mention so let's start with that one I have K. Ali's Elixir 11 now you guys know I fell in love with this fragrance about three or four months ago I bought a discovery set and it had a tiny little uh, 10 ml in the discovery set and I smelled it. It was the first <laughs> fragrance out of the box that I smelled and I was taken aback. I almost fell out of my chair. This is beautiful, you guys. This has apple, this has rose, this has patchouli, amber, vanilla. This is just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance and it's affordable, it's like, for this size bottle, and I think this is the 1.7, I paid like, I think $100 for it or somewhere along those lines. But you guys, when I tell you this fragrance smells so expensive, it does give me um, like a Middle Eastern vibe. It smells like a rich Middle Eastern woman. It is very unique and it is like nothing I have in my collection so it stands out to me a lot and I appreciate fragrances like that because I do feel like I have a I do have a scent profile so I feel like I'm kind of always reaching for the same type of notes and fragrances and stuff like that so this one is a little bit different for me and I really do enjoy it and when I tell you she smells expensive this okay. is my first killian fragrance that i fell in love with i actually have the original i fell in love with the original uh fragrance first and then when i went to buy a full-size bottle i was gonna go buy the original but then they had the extreme there and i'm not sure if this is a limited edition or not I know the Love Extreme was a limited edition, but this one may still be available on the website. Go check it out. If it is, I will put a link down below so you guys can go check that out. But there is a slight difference between the two. This one, the Extreme, has a little bit more of a milky, lactonic type of scent to it, but it still holds that same good girl gone bad dna that i fell in love with years ago i fell in love with it probably about six years ago and i just love it it will always hold a special place in my heart it will always be like top 10 for life i just love it so in the good girl gone bad extreme you have osmanthus jasmine rose demai in the top in the middle you have tuberose milk narcissus and then in the base you have amber white cedar extract okay you guys this is beautiful okay she screams eleganza she screams sophisticated sexy she has a little bit of a mysterious side to her but also a fun side but on top of that she smells rich okay and i'm not talking about like new money i'm talking about generational wealth okay big old money okay that's what she smells like 
it just smells amazing to me it's a compliment getter every time i wear it people always ask me what i have on they love it and it's just one of my favorites okay good girl gone bad extreme by killian starting to really get into tiziana terenzi fragrances i have four in my collection that i love a lot this one i just added to my collection um actually in december so it's fairly new so i haven't really given it like a full wear you know where i really just like got real deep in depth with the fragrance so i'm kind of still in the phase of playing with it but from initial spray it had me at hello it had it smelled very expensive and unfortunately it does come with a heavy price tag as well so if that's the case it ought to smell like money in my opinion all right <laughs> but in the top you get apple you get melon you get mint you get pear cassis grass and in the middle you get jasmine sandbag you get ambergris bulgarian rose heliotrope in the base you get musk vanilla cedar and birch you guys this fragrance does have a green um note to it i'm assuming that's from the cassis and from the grass i hope i'm saying cassis right but I know I mentioned that it has mint in it and mint can be kind of tricky in fragrances but in this one I don't get a lot of mint so I'm really happy about that even though I do love a mint smell but in fragrances uh, I've not really come across a fragrance that had mint in it that I really like a prominent note of mint that I really did enjoy so I'm happy that this one doesn't have a big mint note in it. I don't know if I'm ready to dive into mint just yet, but I love this one. And one thing that I also love about this fragrance is that the ambergris in this fragrance is not stinky. I don't know if you guys have much experience with ambergris, but it can come off smelling a little bit like dirty beach water. Just a stinky kind of smell that I don't really care for. I've only run across maybe two fragrances that had ambergris in it that I didn't like. And that was Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, the Sun Flanker. Girl, I couldn't, I could not, I couldn't, okay? I could not, I could not. So I sold that one, but in this one, the ambergris is not offensive. It's really, really pretty. I love the dry down in this one. This has a musky, woody, kind of earthy dry down to it that I really appreciate because that's a part of my scent profile. I love uh, musky notes, woody notes, and things like that. So I appreciate it. This was not a blind buy. It was kind of like I smelled it and fell in love with it at first whiff. So, I'm going to play with this one a little bit more, but at first whiff, this fragrance smells very, very expensive, okay? This is a Boss Babe fragrance. You hear me? Okay, this is the type of fragrance that makes you boss up. Like, you're going to put on your best suit, okay, for that meeting that you have where you're signing contracts, those type of meetings, okay? This is the type of fragrance where... People smell you and they know you got a bag, okay? Like, you got some money. Like, you pulling off the lot in, you know what I'm saying, that, that G-Wagon. That is how Cabria is coming. It's very, very bossy. So, I had to include it in the lineup because it smells expensive, but it smells like a powerhouse type of expensive, you know? Cabria and this is the 2021 version. It has 2021 on the label. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if she has any other fragrances like this, but I think it was part of an anniversary um, launch that she did last year. So I'm going to play with it a little bit more, but as of right now, I'm loving it. I think it would be good for any time of the year, actually, any season because it has a green note in the top. And then it plays well in the fall and winter because it has those 
um, musky woody notes so I think if you're gonna buy this I think it's a good investment because you'll be able to wear it any time of the so year my next fragrance is a little bit more affordable very affordable actually this is opulent musk from La Tapa hopefully you guys can see that it's a bit of a glare but this is opulent musk from the top of, I got this fragrance off of Amazon and I want to say I, I'm pretty sure I spent less than $60 but you guys it was a blind buy but listen when I smell this fragrance oh it sent me in a trance it sent me girl it sent me this is a beautiful beautiful musky saffron scent okay it it does remind me a little bit of fragrances like um what does it remind me of it does put me in the frame of mind of shag off oud but way pulled back okay a lot more feminine a lot more softer and it smells like money okay in the top in this fragrance you get white musk you get saffron you get lemon in the middle you get white flowers and jasmine in the base you get more musk cedar amber resin and fur resin okay because of the fur resin and the cedar and the saffron it does it's kind of baccarat 540-esque okay but not exact it is very reminiscent it it, it reminds you of Baccarat Rouge 540 and we all know Baccarat smells like cash okay crispy hundred dollar bills and that's what we're going for we're going for an expensive smell okay that's why you clicked on this video because you want to smell like money okay and this is going to get you there you guys when I first smelled this fragrance it just oh my god it was the most prettiest aroma Ever. I was so happy with it. Like I said, it was a blind buy. I love the dry down in this fragrance. Y'all know saffron is one of my favorite notes, okay? Saffron is just sexy. It should be called sexy saffron. I love saffron. And mixed in with the musk and the cedar, the amber, the jasmine, this is just a powerhouse fragrance. Even the bottle you guys looks like i spent a nice penny <laughs> on this fragrance but honey who would know no one will ever know that i only spent 60 dollars. people are people gonna smell me because i haven't worn this out yet people gonna smell me and be like damn i know what you're wearing is expensive but you know i'll keep that to myself i'm gonna keep that to myself <laughs> beautiful i do own a I want to say I own like two other fragrances from La Tapa and all of them I've gotten off of Amazon and I'll just tell you I've been impressed with every last uh, La Tapa fragrance that I have in my collection. Uh, La Tapa is a Middle Eastern uh, perfume house in case you're not aware but every last single La Tapa fragrance has been a banger. So it's definitely a house you should um, research on and try out some of the fragrances you guys i promise you you will not be disappointed I'm, again i'm about to hit you with something different this is a flanker um and it's made by cartier and it's not gonna be for everybody this is going to be for probably a more experienced nose I don't know if you're just coming into fragrances, like you're just starting out, you're building your collection, you're trying to figure out what you like and things like that. I don't know if this is gonna be for you. This is gonna be more for those who have more experience with fragrances and notes and you kind of, your nose is a little bit more mature. You feel me, feel where I'm going with this? Like you're not afraid to um, stand out you're not afraid to be different when it comes to fragrances because you've been you've been doing this for a minute you've been doing this for a while okay that is what that that's my disclaimer for this next fragrance and this is Cartier's Le Panthere but this is a flanker this is the edition soir okay 
This is the Edition Soir. Again, this is Le Pentier, but it's Edition Soir. No worries, I will leave everything down in the description below, okay? Now, there are five notes in this fragrance. You have gardenia, you have an animal note, you have oak moss, you have musk, and you have florals. I'm just gonna spray this a little bit because even though I've had it for several weeks, I just wanna get a whiff so I can give you guys the best description of this fragrance that I can. Now, I do get hints of the original Le Panthier DNA. And if you guys are familiar with that one, you know that it has a very vintage vibe. At least for me, it has a very vintage vibe. And again, it's not gonna be for everybody. Now this one, in my opinion, it's a little sweeter. Um, I feel like it's a little bit more of a modern take on the Le Panthier, but there's an animal note in this fragrance. I don't know what that animal is. I don't know if it's tiger, lion, a cat, a barracuda, a, a raccoon. I don't know what that animal is, honey, but when I tell you it is one of the sexiest animalic smells to my nose it's the kind of smell that i cannot stop sniffing because i'm so intrigued that it goes with this fragrance you know what i'm saying like it smells like a sexy kitty cat <laughs> i'm just like whoa you know and i'm real you know when it comes to animalic sense you know it could go left real quick with me you know especially when you get it on the skin and it starts mixing in with your own dna and you like hold on now what 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 is this what is this i'm smelling you know but with this one man you guys it smells so pretty it goes so well with this fragrance i don't know how they did what they did but it works it works with this one and we all know it's Cartier. You guys, if you, you know, you know Cartier. They make the bracelets and the jewelry and all the stuff we that I can't afford. So you know off the rip, even with the name, it's saying money, okay? It's saying expensive. It's saying like, when you put this on, people are gonna think that you live in a mansion, that you drive a Bentley, that you just make money in your sleep effortlessly. Okay, like you're that woman, okay, you're her, you're that boss babe. And that's what this fragrance gives me. Again, because of the animalic note, it, it's giving me very niche. And in my opinion, niche is very unique. It's made for unique individuals that don't mind being different, smelling different. I think the original OG Le Panthier is a little bit, I think it's made more for the masses, okay? It's more of a crowd-pleasing type of fragrance. This one is not, okay? It's a beautiful scent, very sensuous, very mysterious, very feminine, very beautiful, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna say this is unisex. I had to kind of think about that twice about the feminine when I said feminine, but yeah, I'm gonna put it out there. I don't, I cannot see a man wearing this fragrance because probably because of the fruity notes, the gardenia um, and the other floral notes in this fragrance. So I'm just gonna say it's feminine, okay? It's feminine, but it smells expensive, you know? And I think I paid $60 for this, 65 or something like that. I didn't get it off of Amazon. I actually bought it from a perfume shop here in Houston, but it was money well spent, honey. Money well spent. And it does have a, it has a powdery dry down now that I'm smelling it. I just want to touch on the dry down too, in case you guys are intrigued about this. The dry down has a very unique smell to me. I get that oak moss smell and oak moss in my opinion can smell like a um a pond, like very aquatic in my opinion. Um 
like a stream of water, aquatic, okay? That's in the forest. So it has a little woody aquatic smell to my nose whenever I smell oak moss, okay? So this fragrance does dry down kind of earthy, kind of powdery um, along those lines. So I would not say this is a a blind buy. I would not blind buy this fragrance. I mean, only if you are a daredevil, then go for it. But if you are someone that is more pickier about fragrances, I would not recommend you blind buy this. I would say smell it first, get it on your skin because you're gonna need to know how that animalic note meshes with your own DNA. So get it on your skin first. But I've worn it, I did a day's wear with it, um, and it's just amazing. It smells like long money, okay? Long money. It smells good. It might be. Now that we're out of the woods and the jungle, I'm gonna take you guys to somewhere more uh, opulent, a little bit more foo-foo, okay? A little bit more, you know, glamorous. No. Tiffany and & Co. Intense. I love this fragrance. And you guys hipped me to this fragrance because I think I did a review on the OG, the, the regular Tiffany & Co. fragrance. And you guys was like, nah, 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 nah. You need to get that Intense. The Intense is where it's at, sis. So I took y'all's advice. I picked up the Tiffany Co. Intense. And it's like a day one for me. This is my day one. I've been, I was sleeping on this for real. I was sleeping on this fragrance. So let's talk about the notes. In the top, you get pear, mandarin leaf, pink pepper. In the middle, you get iris, rose, jasmine. In the base, you get musk. Cashmerian, benzoin, vanilla, carrot seeds, and amber. But like I said, to my nose, I get something very soft, feminine, very, very pretty. The iris is very prominent in this fragrance to me. The musk is very prominent. I smell more of the jasmine than I get of the rose. In the top, I don't really get a lot of pink pepper and you go you know pink pepper can stand out a lot in fragrances especially when it's in the top I don't get a lot of pink pepper if anything I get a slight fruity note from the pear but to my nose the two the two notes that I get a lot were really I get about four notes out of this fragrance I get the iris the jasmine the musk the cashmerian which makes it you know very soft no let me just spray this a little bit because i'm really trying to pull some of that benzoin and amber from this fragrance maybe i needed i think that's what i needed to do was to spray it this is this is everything to me y'all this is this is nice. Cashmerian makes it feel soft and powdery and fluffy and sweet and feminine. And y'all know with a name like Tiffany & Co, that's all you really need to say, Tiffany & Co. When somebody asks you, what are you wearing? Oh, I'm wearing Tiffany & Co. They know you, they know. The first thing word that's gonna pop in their head is money, okay, money. This just smells expensive to me. It smells like I need to be dripping in Tiffany, okay? Like, I need all the Tiffany jewelry, the diamonds. This is just this what I would imagine the Tiffany store smelling like when you walk in there. Now, I ain't been in Tiffany's in a hot minute. Probably about a good, shoot, I don't know, almost 10 years I've not been in Tiffany, but this is what I would imagine it smell like in Tiffany right now, in the Tiffany store. Just very expensive, very feminine, very beautiful, glamorous. You know, it smells like, it, it reminds me of an old movie, you know, what the women would smell like back then, you know, like Audrey Hepburn type vibe, you know, just, just expensive. It smells expensive. So this is a this is probably as far as 
I cannot say, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. This would probably be in my top 10 for like, to be honest with you, because I love it that much and it just, it smells beautiful on me. I feel like I can wear this all times of the year. It doesn't matter. It just, it vibes. It goes with every season, okay? It's a banger. It's a banger. Okay. My last fragrance is actually another Amazon buy. You guys know I love to shop on Amazon, child. Amazon is just like my favorite. I love to come home and see packages at my door at the end of a hard day where I've been busting my butt all day. I don't know. I love Amazon. It's Jasmine Wisp. Now y'all know this fragrance hit the scene. Was it last summer? Ooh, child. Was it last summer? I think it was last summer. Baby, and it spread like wildfire, okay? Everybody was picking up this fragrance and rightfully so because it is very, very, very beautiful, y'all. Let's get into the notes. In the top, you have mandarin orange, grapefruit, lemon. In the middle, you have passion fruit, white flowers, pear, peach, coconut. In the base, you have vanilla amber and tonka okay this fragrance smells like somebody has been making it rain on you okay notes okay in the top i'll just tell you i'm getting a, i'm pulling a lot of fruits um from this fragrance i'm getting the pear which is so juicy and sweet that peach mandarin orange I'm getting the coconut and all of that is blended with that vanilla, which is making it even more sweeter and creamier. Oh my goodness. The amber makes this fragrance very warm. And I do pick up mm, every now and then little something, um, hints of something kind of a little spicy, just, just a little bit, okay? And that's from the Tonka, but Besides that, y'all, mm, this is gorgeous. This is a must-have in your collection. That really just, it really does something to my spirit. When I can get away with spending less than $100 on a fragrance, but everybody thinks that I smell like I spent a bag. You know what I'm saying? This is something about that I feel like I'm getting away with something, like I'm being sneaky or something like that. I don't know, but I okay. love that. And with this one, Jasmine with it gives me that rich smell vibe. And I just absolutely love it. How no matter what you pick out of this selection, you're gonna smell like crispy hundred dollar bills, okay? You're gonna smell like money, okay? You're gonna smell like the Washington Mint. Is that where they hold all the money at the Washington Mint? I don't know, but you won't smell like money, okay, sis? Trust me. Comment down below if you have any of these fragrances. I would love to know your views on them. Let me know what fragrance you have in your collection that smells very expensive. I might wanna get my nose on it, okay? If you are into fragrances, you love to smell good, you're building a collection, maybe you're trying to make a decision on a fragrance, I would love for you to join my family. Hit the subscribe button, okay? Hit the notification bell, that way you'll be notified every time I upload and you don't miss out. I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a fabulous day and I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye.